Hello, Tex Andrews with the Light Zone Project. And in this video, I'm going to be talking about the tool stack in Light Zone. We're in the editor module, and this is an image that I took in the American West in 2012. Um, and I've started to edit it. It was a raw image. And so the first tools that came out in my editing session were the raw adjustment tool and the raw tone curve tool. They came out immediately in a raw image that's always true. You won't see them in a JPEG or a TIFF image, but you will see them always with a raw image. So after these two tools, I made no adjustments in the raw tool except to jump the color noise slider up. I always do that. There's no harm in doing it. The very next tool that was deployed was the spot tool. When you deploy tools in LightZone, they automatically go to the top of the stack. I'm going to deploy a sharpening tool here, and you see it's automatically gone to the top of the stack on top of the existing sharpening tool. I'm not going to do any more sharpening than I've already done, but that's just to show you that's where tools go automatically. I'll disable this and, and get rid of it. So the spot tool was the first tool that I brought up, and you see this is the area where I spotted the image. I will disable it so you can see what happened. And you see there's a sensor dust spot. Because most of the corrections that I was going to do to this image had to do with contrast adjustments, the last thing I wanted was to be doing a bunch of contrast adjusting on a dust spot. So I got rid of it immediately. You don't have to use your spot tool here but it makes sense to me to use it there. But you have your own workflow. And the nice thing about LightZone is that you're not constrained to do one thing in any particular order. So as we saw, when you deploy a tool, it comes up to the top of the tool stack. So when you look at a tool stack, to some extent, it's a record of the order in which you did things, but not exactly. Because the next tool after the spot tool that I deployed was this relight tool here. So how did this zone mapper tool get between my spot tool and my relight tool? Well, these tools are all their own layer, and they all work independently of one another. You're not sharpening this layer, for instance. This is a separate layer. This is a separate layer. This is a separate layer. All the tools are their own layer. And because they're independent of one another, you can move them. Originally, this zone mapper tool, and you can see that it has a region associated with it, and you can see the icon there. This zone mapper tool was somewhere up in this area. It was one of the last things I did. Now, if you look, the sky has changed. In other words, if the zone mapper is up here, it affects the image one way if it's down here, it affects the contrast of this guy in another way. And in fact, the highlights get pumped up a little bit, and that gives us a little more definition in the sky. So this is something that's important to remember. Just because you deployed a tool up and it wound up at the top of the stack, it doesn't mean that you need to leave it there. You can move it anywhere you want. This sharpening tool, for instance, was here originally. And I decided that I still needed a little bit of something in the image, so I deployed another hue saturation tool. But because I like my sharpening tool at the end of the stack, I just moved it right up there. So in addition to regions, in addition to the various sliders on a tool, in addition to the color tool tabs, uh, the color selection tab and the, and the tool selection tab, that make the tools themselves individually incredibly flexible, you also have a great deal of flexibility in terms of the way the image is edited. It gets edited from the bottom to the top. That's how the tools are applied in the stack, one in turn from the bottom to the top. And by moving those tools, you can change how the image is affected in what order by what tools.